Alrighty, so in today's video, we're going to be reviewing MX Linux for the Raspberry Pi 4. I've actually never taken a look at this operating system on my channel before, so I'm excited to give it a go and see what it has. But before we get started, if we take a look over at the community post when the Stitcher was released, we see right here that it says, It unites the user-centered goodness of MX Linux with the educational flexibility of Raspberry Pi OS. So it's built on top of Debian, which is built on top of Raspberry Pi OS, and it uses a unique unique implementation of Flukesbox and including elements from GNOME, XFC, and LXD, a mix that creates a tasty ragout stew. So it really takes applications and different things from all the different desktop environments, smashes them together, and makes a really interesting and unique desktop environment. So it looks really interesting. I'm excited to give it a go and see what different features this kind actually has. And yeah, but before we get started to install it, you just go over right here to sourceforge.net projects dash linux files dash mx linux i'll leave a link to this in the description below you head over right here you go right here to and you just click this one mx fbr pi i image.xc you're going to want to click that one it's going to start downloading it for you and then you flash it either with raspberry pi imager or balen etcher both work really well so it's really easy to install and it is built on top of raspberry pi os the 32-bit version so you're going to have a lot of app compatibility and it's going to be a really nice to show for your raspberry pi 4 so let's take a look and see what apps can be installed so right here on the left right here you can see we do have a nice dock the dock is actually a custom dock i'm pretty sure it doesn't look, doesn't look like it's plank or conky or anything like that so it's pretty interesting and yeah so right here we have the help and then right here we have files files looks to be like the xfc thornar file manager so if i go over to help and then go to about we see that this is indeed Thunar, the XFC file manager. So they've used the XFC file manager. Looks pretty interesting. It works well. I'm familiar with it, so I'm happy. It looks good. Next, right here, we have MX Tools, which is like a settings manager dash type of uh, some tools you need. So we have job scheduler right here, and then cleanup. Cleanup is actually really nice, and it allows us to clean up all the trash files on our system that are making our system run slower or just using up space that we don't need. So right here, we have selected user pi. We have our clean folders, our old app files, our logs. You can delete all logs because that's basically what I want. I don't need any logs. We can go all users if we want and then we just click apply so apply is going to delete all our trash files that we don't need click apply give it a second and it deleted 12 megabytes of files but i've only been using this operating system for about a few hours so there definitely is not that much trash but if i was using this for about a week there would be a lot more trash so it would be really useful so i recommend doing this tool every once in a while it's really useful it's cool that they give it pre-installed i'm happy Next right here, we have user manager, which we don't really need to take a look at. We have codex installer, select sound. We have welcome, system locales, brightness, stray, conky. And then we have network assistant and then tweak. Tweak allows us basically to tweak some of the desktop features. It doesn't allow us to tweak like the themes, but other stuff like the panels and the dock. So it's pretty useful. Cool tool that they get pre-installed with the Fluxbox desktop environment. We have fixed GPG keys, we have repo manager, add and remove software, quick system info, iDesk tool, iDevice mounter. I was actually really interested to see what this was. This allows us to automatically mount iOS devices. So it's really interesting that it comes free and sold on a Linux distro with a Raspberry Pi 4. But it's cool that they do it and it looks useful. I might even try it sometime. I do have iOS devices, so it looks really interesting and I'm just amazed that that comes pre-installed next we have mx docs maker so we click right here and this will do this says this will allow you to create a new dock so i at least obviously don't want a new dock right now i already have one on the left but it's cool that they give you the option to install another dock and then just click close i guess that's about it for the settings. It's a nice MX application settings. And yeah, next on the bottom, we have another panel right here. So on the left right here, if you look, we have this button guy is gonna allow us to log out, lock the screen, reboot and stuff like that. It's cool that they do that and it's interesting. And next right here, if we click on the time, we see we have the date, the time is pretty standard, nothing special there. If we click right here, we can actually see all our system usage. It's really interesting that it comes pre-installed like this. We can see our CPU temperature. Mine right now is at 47 degrees Celsius. 
I have 291 processes going, and yeah, so it's interesting that it comes pre-installed on the dock right there, but I'm not complaining, it's cool, I love it. Next right here we have, what is this right here? This is the settings, so let's click on that. So this is the tint to panel themes. So I guess you can basically change the way the panel looks on the bottom. Pretty interesting that it comes also pre-installed, easy to access. So I might recommend playing around with this thing and see. So the panel is the tint to panel. Pretty nice panel, I like it, very customizable. And yeah, it's awesome that it comes pre-installed. Next right here, we can, we can see all our applications. This is also really nice to be able to see all your applications. You can search for them, you can look through them, you can scroll. It's really nice that it comes pre-installed like this. Next, we can also, if we hit the super key on our keyboard or the Windows key, hit that key, and you see this thing calls comes up called D-Run. D-Run is actually a really nice app launcher that comes pre-installed on here and you can hit the windows key to launch it's really fast and quick that's why i like it it's lightweight it works well so this is the probably the one that i'd be using more like i want imager i type imager in here you hit enter and it launches really quickly it's really easy to do so and it's just awesome that D run comes pre-installed because i love drun i use it on a lot of linux distributions it's really quick fast and amazing that is why i love it so now let's take a look at some of the pre-install applications so we click right here and if we go over to accessories we'll take a look at just all these different categories in order and really seeing which ones comes pre-installed and which ones don't so our application finder which is a thing we're using right now we have archive manager that's not what i wanted to do my bad uh, we have bull green and catfish file search clip bit compton so we're using compton it looks like pretty interesting Conky Manager, Conky Toggle, Debian Reference, we have Raspberry Pi Imager, we have iDevice Mounter, which we also took a look at, we have MX Updater, which looks like an updater for the system, we have Nitrogen, which is actually really nice, Nitrogen allows you to change the background image on your system, and it comes, looks like there are a few wallpapers that come pre-installed on here, so let's take a look at like this ocean one, click apply, and yeah, our desktop already looks a lot more vibrant now with that MX default wallpaper taken away. It looks really interesting and I personally do enjoy this wallpaper a bit more. So with Nitrogen, you can actually change the wallpaper. Really interesting tool, really nice, love it. Next right here, we scroll down more, we have Thunar, we have Screenshot, which also may be the XFC version, looks like it to me. Yeah, this looks like the XFC screenshot manager, definitely. But I really do love this one. Like, if we open up our terminal right here, we go active window, we click OK. It's automatically going to select that terminal window for me. Click on that. And then it should take a screenshot of it. Is it working? Hmm. That did not work as planned. Let's try it one more time. Screenshot real fast. Active window, we can click okay hmm i don't know why that's not working right now must be some glitch or something like that but it should work theoretically i might be doing something wrong right there but that is about it for the accessories we don't have much in here we have usb image writer which is actually also interesting we can make a bootable usb stick that come this is a tool that comes pre installed pretty simple works well and yeah it's nice that it is on there why did i open that let's close that tint manager real fast X so fast, my bad. And yeah, so next right here, we are gonna have, so in accessories, we're down there in development, we have Genie, which is an IDE, we have Icon Browser, and Thani, which is for Python. In education, we have LibreOffice Math, which comes on most Linux distributions, actually. Graphics, we have Image Magic, LibreOffice Draw, and Nomax, which is like an image viewer. I think this is the one from LXD, where it might be from XFC. I could be wrong, though. In Internet, we have Claws Mail, Pale Moon, and then Chromium. I actually installed myself with sudo app and install Chromium, because I'm just not a fan of this Pale Moon browser. But it's my personal preference. You guys might enjoy it. I don't know. In Multimedia, we have Pulse Audio and VLC. Pretty standard applications for a Linux distro as well. In Office, we have all the LibreOffice applications, also pretty standard. In Settings right here, we have Add and Remove Software, which we also take a look took a look at. In Advanced Network Configuration, we have MX System Sounds, Main Menu Editor, Light DM, 
settings right there. We have open box configuration files, Raspberry Pi configuration. So these are just all like the settings, pretty similar, pretty standard settings in here, to be honest. In system right here, we have scroll up to the top, we have added from the software, we have system monitor G ported comes pre-installed, also really nice to see pre-installed. We have I mean, there's just a lot of applications in here that I even don't know what they are all because there are a lot of like custom MX settings, but it's really nice to say pre-install on here. So, I mean, yeah. And if we didn't want to change like the theme, we click the Windows theme. If we, we type in appearance right here, appearance, customized look and feel. This is the same one that comes pre-installed on Raspberry Pi OS. It's the LX appearance. Let's say we wanted like the arc dark instead. Click arc dark. We can go we, we could go with a different icon theme we're using papyrus right now which is probably my favorite i really do enjoy that i'm glad to see that on here mouse cursor we're using add a way to just the default if we click apply now we have a different theme applied and i do enjoy this one and let's say we wanted to change the window icons we could go over to open box configuration right here so right now we're using clear looks if we change that to like new mix would that work or wait this may not be using open box actually this is using a custom flukes box window manager yeah so you can't use it with open box it looks like because it's using a different window manager so i'm not exactly sure how you go how you go about changing these icons right here because they do look a bit big which is a bit odd but they still do work well but now take a look at the system resource usage let's open up our terminal real fast and take a look at htop so let's move this over to the middle real fast and as you see my theme did change a bit because i changed it to arc and type in htop real fast and on idle right now we're using about 348 megabytes of ram pretty standard pretty good for a distro on the raspberry pi 4 you're not going to have any ram issues with this operating system it's a pretty lightweight one just like raspberry pi os so nothing to worry about here it's pretty good pretty standard if we take a look at neo fetch real fast what we can see right here that we're using the 5.10 kernel we're at 1080p we're using the flukes box window manager and the window manager theme is the mx debian blue rounded theme pretty standard stuff in here they actually have not changed the neofetch logo from the raspberry pi which is fine it's still a really nice distro and yeah so now let's take a look at some web browsing slash video playback in the chromium web browser let's open up chromium real fast you see, I keep on using DRUN rather than the application finder. I just find it easier to use, much faster, and that's basically why I use it more. But now to take a look at some web browsing, let's say Raspberry Pi or type that in real fast. We can see we can click on here. It loads up pretty quickly. I mean, everything on here is going to be pretty similar to the default Raspberry Pi OS because it's based on it. So you're going to have all the same support. And yeah, so you see it loads up pretty quickly. If we were to open up Amazon as well, real fast, amazon.com, you see it also loads up. It's gonna load up pretty quickly, works well, and it's all really snappy and cool. So web browsing, you're definitely not gonna have any problems with this distro whatsoever. If we went over to youtube.com real fast, we tried out some Big Buck Bunny to see the video playback. So let's see what it looks like. Give it a second to load my network speeds are slow as always always annoying you go to search big buck bunny and we go right here to this i'll go with 720 right now we can test 1080 later if 720 actually performs at a watchable rate we go stats for nerds and right here we skip through real fast to see get to the middle part and right now we are running at let's see what we're running this at. actually go to settings real fast we're at 480 right now we want to up that to 720 and then right now at 720 we're dropping about start this guy to play real fast we're dropping zero frames out of 133 it looks pretty smooth i can tell a bit of like lagging and stuff like that but overall pretty good 720p video playback for the raspberry pi 4 smooth watchable and that's good so you're not gonna have any problems with video playback as well on here and like i said if you did want to install any operating software on here you can do as well but yeah 
So let's try some Pi apps and see like if Pi apps does work. I mean, there, theoretically, it should work without any problem on here. But let's make sure real fast. So we go over to God's Botspot's GitHub page right here, and my web browser just locked up real fast. So let's move this over to the left right here. We can see open up our XFC terminal. Scroll down to install. Just copy the widget right here. Copy and paste that over in my terminal. Hit enter and bam, it's downloading Pi apps and everything theoretically should work without any problem. It says installation complete already. That is definitely fast. So Pi apps right here, hit that right there. And bam, Pi apps should launch. Yeah, Pi apps, bam. So Pi apps works on here like any 64 bit operating system on the Raspberry Pi 4 or 32 bit. So it's really nice to see that work on here. And yeah, so to conclude this video, MX Linux is a really nice distro for the Raspberry Pi 4. I've actually really had an amazing time playing around with it. There is so much you can do with it. There's so much customizability. And it's nice that it's kind of a mix of all the different desktop environments on one. So it's a really nice desktop. It looks pretty beautiful, but I would recommend changing some stuff around because the default theme doesn't really appeal to me but that's just my personal preference but mx linux really is amazing i've had an amazing time playing around with it and let me know down below in the comments what you think about this desktop have you like it or would you rather not use it as a daily operating system let me know down below in the comments thanks so much for watching it would be amazing if you subscribe maybe hit that like button and yeah thanks for watching